Well, some of you have heard this. I've related this, uh, I think it was in 2019. I don't remember exactly, but um, our conversion story. Uh, and it's not, and I say our because it's not just mine, it's Wendy's and mine. So a little bit of background. Grew up in central Minnesota, little town of New Munich, less than 300 people. Um, it's in Stearns County, which is pretty much central in the state. Um, very much German Catholic communities. Uh, we're 30 or 40 miles from St. Cloud, which is the archdiocese of the Catholic Church. Uh, grew up being an altar boy from the time I was eligible, which was first communion, um, until I was probably an adolescent, something of that nature. <clears throat> and so we're all very religious in that area. We went to the Catholic grade school, which by the way was across the street from my house on Main Street. Our front doors lined up basically. Uh, so first through sixth grade, going to Catholic school, we went to mass every morning. So five days a week we went to mass. I became an altar boy. Eventually I was the altar boy up there five days a week doing mass. Uh, in those days we did it in Latin choir and the altar boys would respond in Latin to the priest. So I memorized the words. I didn't know what they meant probably or maybe had some idea, but at any rate, religious community, went to church on Sundays. Um, later on, of course, you're allowed to go Saturday nights. By the time I was in my teens, um, the priest was a, a pretty steady priest there and he always concluded his sermon with the same phrase. And that was my trigger to wake back up so I could stand up and do whatever with everybody else. Uh, even in those days, you know, I kind of thought, you know, what's this about these statues and praying to them? I wasn't real convinced about some of that or the, pre or the Pope being infallible. And I remember as an adolescent asking my mother, because we always read from the Gospels or the priest always read from the Gospels, so I always wondered what was more in that book. Cause... So I asked my mother one day, I said, do we have a Bible? And she was reading or doing something. She goes, well, yeah, we have one somewhere, but it's in German. My parents immigrated in 1955, the year I was born, from Germany. So, you know, if we had one, it was in German. Okay. <clears throat> Got through high school, joined the Army. Um, so back up a little bit. Way back in grade school again, we had two classes to a classroom. And there's a flash in the pan in my mind, like it happened yesterday, but I remember seeing this cute little blonde girl in the back of the room in the second grade. Her name was Wendy. <laughs> so just a, a starter there. Um, I didn't really get to know her until I went to work for her dad on the dairy farm. Um, worked out on that dairy farm on weekends and during the summer. My senior year, I was out there full time. Uh, we started dating when I was a sophomore. We started doing things together. By the time the end of my senior year rolled around, we were engaged to be married in 74. Uh, set the wedding for a date in July of 75, July 12, 1975. We were married in the Catholic Church in our hometown. She lived out on the farm two miles outside of town. I knew who she was growing up um, and we went back out to Colorado. I was in the Army at Fort Carson. So <clears throat> we get out there and I had found a small basement apartment in a big old house. I think it was a three-story house that was broken up into uh, apartments. And we had the, the house was on the corner and we had the basement apartment and the entrance was on the side. Um, and so of course, our first apartment, we're setting up life together and enjoying it. Uh, we're putting the, putting the apartment together and I can distinctly remember telling or saying something to Wendy. I said, I sure wish I knew more about the Bible. Um, and lo and behold, I don't remember if it was three days or a week or whatever. <laughs> Hello, we're with the Church of Christ, we're the Campaign for Christ. Um, we're wondering if you'd be interested in a Bible study. Tell me that wasn't Providence. <laughs> um, so we said, oh, okay. So we sat down and they had Ivan Stewart's open Bible study, the three lesson open Bible study. So we went through the first two and, and you know, having gone to church five days a week and on Sundays and going to catechism classes, etc., we weren't unknowledgeable about most of the traditional stories, etc., and Bible stories and those kinds of things. So, all right, made a lot of sense to us. And so it wasn't hard for us to understand what they were telling us, but 
we're young adults starting out in the world, and so the third study was set for a Friday night at, I don't know, probably 7 o'clock or something like that. And we thought, yeah, we're not sure about this, and so we made a point of not being home on Friday night for that third Bible study. Saturday morning. Missed you last night. <laughs> um, so we went through that third Bible study, and of course the conclusion was, is, well, why wouldn't you be baptized? So we were baptized that day. It was August 2nd, three weeks after we were married. What a wonderful time in our life to start out like that. <clears throat> and they had uh, an excellent program, um, and that was a Brother's Keeper program. And so I was in the Army. Um, we were at uh, Eastside Church of Christ, Pikes Peak Avenue in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Uh, there were a couple of young captains that were the uh, group leaders, and so there were young airmen, um, young military men, young couples, uh, and so they had that Brothers Keepers program, which, <clears throat> you know, at that point in our lives and having made such a big change, would we have remained faithful? I don't know, I can't say it, but I'm certainly thankful that it was there um, and that we're um, able to be brought up into that. And some of the memories I have about, it was the last day of the campaign that we were baptized, so they were winding things down, finishing things up, and there were still a lot of people around. Um, I don't remember if it was afternoon or evening, but we were at the church building, and I remember seeing youngsters running down the aisle and thinking, man, they've already got the advantage. They're already here learning this stuff. And here I am starting at this point in my life to learn these things. Uh, and of course, the other thing is that Christians are loving people. And coming out of the Catholic Church, that's somewhat stoic, if you will, if you've been around that at all. Um, we weren't real sure about that stuff. Is that for real? Or is that, you know, is that just to put on to suck us in? Or what's that all about? So, of course, it's real. And once we figure those things out, it was wonderful. So... But again, the thing that I, I just am so very thankful for is when it occurred in our lives, we were starting out a new life together, and three weeks later, we were able to be baptized into Christ. What a wonderful way to start that life. Oh, yeah, I forgot the mailbox. I always forget the mailbox. <laughs> the apartment door was around the side, and of course, we're setting up, and we put our mailbox out there, and wonderful. So when we were talking with folks after we were baptized, um, the folks that came with the Bible study, and I don't remember their names, but I know they were from Michigan. I remember that much. Um, they had said, well, we would have never knocked on that door had that mailbox not been there. Of course, sometime shortly after that, the mailman came up and said, do you suppose we could move that mailbox up on the porch where all the other mailboxes are at and save me a few steps? And we did. And of course, at the time when all that happened, Looking back at it, guess what? Same thing. The providence of God. Thank you. <laughs>